Hey guys, <clears throat> me again. Yeah, but you fed up with seeing my face today, aren't you? Um, it's time has come. Time has come to start cutting some plastic on this, on this model. Yes, let's start cutting some plastic today, and I don't intend to stop. So, um, I am renowned for not finishing things or stopping halfway through and then doing something else and then coming back to it. Um, I'm determined with this to build this to the end. Um, I can't see me getting bored or losing my mojo because it's like one seat, one engine, one pair of undercarriage, you know, it's, 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 um, it's a single engine, single seat fighter, so there's nothing too repetitive about it. And it looks pretty accurate to me and it looks like a beautiful kit with it's crammed with loads of detail and lots of opportunities to add a few little bits and pieces as well and also some weathering and that. And as you know, I've already got the air scale upgrade set for it. Um, on the note of the Airscale upgrade set, um, I did a video and called it Airfix 124 scale Hellcat build part one, uh, no kit yet if you remember and if you've seen that um, you'll notice the name has changed, I've called it Airfix 124 scale Hellcat Airscale upgrade set because I want to call this part one. I was a bit silly really putting that video up and calling it part one. I should have just called it air scale set in, in the start. But the trouble is because I don't have much memory on my camera, the, the, the camera's, the, the, the film has been deleted now. So um, I can't sort of redo it. Otherwise I would just wipe that one and redo it again. Um, so yeah, I've, I've filmed part two already without the kit as well um, of the air scale build. So that's gone on. So what I'll do, um, I'll leave it as it is. OK, and then we'll pick up the air scale build as we do the cockpit in here. So that way it will blend in more with the kit. I'm sorry if anybody's got confused, but if you don't have the air scale set, it won't interest you anyway. Um, if you want to build the kit out of the box um, and if you have got the air scale set, then great. You've seen part one. Part two of that will be in this build somewhere wherever we come in to do the instrument panel. So um, I'm going to get cracking. And one more thing quickly, um, people forever ask me about tools, what I use, where I get them from, what do I think of them, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to start this video off, not for beginners as such, but maybe there's going to be a few people out there that want to buy this kit and sort of, they haven't done many before. Um, there'd be no reason why they can't build this, It'd be pretty easy for you to build. And... Um, so I'm just going to do a quick sort of five minutes over tools and sanders and stuff that I've got. So if you are an experienced modeler, then fast forward until you see me get the instructions out of something. And that'll be your cue that I've done that bit. All right. So I'll see you in a minute. OK, then. So here we are on the bench. Right. What have we got here? I'll start with my knives. I use the Swan Morton um, scalpels purely because I like the fact they're flat, they don't roll off the bench all the time, like the X-Acto knives do, these round type, where you put them down and they just roll around. So um, these are my preferred knives and I buy loads of blades for them and stuff, so they're the ones I like to use. The only trouble is if you've got sausage fingers like me, sometimes they're a bit difficult to pick up. So, And these are my two go-to blades. This one's a number 10 and this one's a 10A. Um, 10A is good for basically pretty much everything, but the, the curved blade, this one, is great for scraping. If you need to scrape an ejector pin mark off of something, because this one you have to be dead flat. So if you were sort of trying to get, I don't know, down in between there, say, this can do it. You can get down in there, whereas with that one you can't. So that's why I like to have those two blades. So they're my favourite. Um, these are also good for, they're really worn out for super glue. You can dip it in the super glue and then roll it into the joint on the edge. They're also very good for cutting photo etch, but this model doesn't have any photo etch in it in the box, so you'll be interested in that. Sprue cutters, I've got my little fine, fine pointed Tamiya cutters. Um, these, in my opinion, value for money, they're the best out there. You've got lots of uh, competition, you've got the God Hand and everything, and there's the um, there's the main ones and there's all sorts of cutters. Um, in my opinion, value for money, these are the best. I get these from Plaza Japan and they're about £16. Um, you can see them on Amazon for like 30 odd sometimes. And then I've got a pair of really cheap cutters and I use these for thicker sprues. If you've got large sprue connection points, um, you know, these are for fine work. They're not for cutting through great chunks of plastic. So that's what I keep those for. So that's those out of the way. And then sanding sticks. Um, 
I tend to use pretty exclusively flory sanding sticks. My go-to stick is this one. You could pretty much build a whole model with that. And these are called skinny sticks. If you go on the Flory Models website, um, he does these. There's a green one, a white one, and a blue one. Uh, I've got some worn out ones here, but for this model, I'm going to use all new stuff. The blue one is coarser. See, this one's pretty worn out. And then there's the white one, which is kind of a bit coarser than this and in between. So that's kind of how they go like that. OK, um, but the green one, if you only buy one packet, get the green They're They're awesome. Um, I also always use these. These are a very soft sponge and they're very good for for sanding around um, round items because you can see if you look there as I'm sanding, it's following the shape of the actual part there and it won't put flats on stuff. If I were to try and sand that round with this, I'd end up putting a flat on it. You can do the well, the correct movement is that as the engineers will tell you. Um, with this, you can sort of just sand away and remove seam lines without worrying about putting flats on. And then this one is a skinny stick version of this. Now, this is a fairly hard sponge, so it's not really suitable for um, sort of sanding round items, but you've got a very fine side here and a fairly coarse side here. And this is basically a skinny stick of the same thing. Um, and I really like this because this is great for if you've kind of, um, I don't know, if there's, a, if there's a panel on a wing and you filled it in with uh, Mr. Surfacer, then it's great for sanding large areas and it won't dig in. Um, and then this one here, these are actually from Tesco's, I get these or from a supermarket and they're like a very hard plywood uh, nail file. Um, I don't know of anybody that makes a, a specific modeling tool like this. But they're very, very good if you want to retain a sharp edge. Like if I had a sprue nib on there, I could sand this off and it will leave that edge nice and sharp, like nice sharp corners. If I use something softer, I'm likely to put a, a radius on it. And also this is wide and flat. So if I had a sprue nib there and I use this, I'm likely to end up with a, a radius in it. Whereas if I use this, it's just all flat. So they are the basic tools I use. Okay, now obviously you've got your, your paints and your primers and your fillers and everything else. Glues, I haven't covered glues. I've got this piece of foam sponge here that I've just cut three holes in it and I think they're 40 millimeters square. And this is basically my go-to glue. This is Tamiya Extra Thin. This is the ideal modeling cement. It's the best on the market in my opinion. And it works wonderfully with the Airfix plastic. So the trouble is with the bottle, sometimes when you put the lid back on, the thread will just catch and you can easily knock the bottle over. There you go. I, I can pick the bottle up there, you see, without even screwing the lid down. So the trouble is there, if I did that when I'm modelling and moving, I could end up knocking it over. So what I've done is I've made this little piece of foam. It's about an inch thick and I've got my Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. I've got my ordinary Tamiya Extra Thin and this one here is a glue called Plastic Weld which works very, very well with styrene sheet. And I tend to use that one for larger areas purely because it's got a bigger, fatter brush. Um, there's lots of other glues you can buy. There's your, your Mr. Hobby ones, and then you've got your, your thick, your thick Tammy one there. Um, I've got one here. This is a Tammy Extra Thin that I've put some black paint in to dye it. And uh, I saw um, Brett from High Altitude Scale Modeling he did a review on a Mr. Hobby glue, which was black. So I thought, why don't I try putting some black acrylic paint in the glue? And it works. And so you can see when it's all run down the seams. I think it's a bit of a gimmick, to be honest. I don't bother with it now. <laughs> um, and then also, of course, on top of that, you've got your tweezers and stuff you're going to need for fine small parts. But um, if you are new to the hobby, you know, you don't need to buy all the tools now. Get them as you need them. And the one thing I would suggest is make yourself a small list and then sort of buy everything from one place because you don't want to be, you know, spending three pounds postage here, three pounds postage there, five pounds postage there. Before you know it, you spent more on postage than you have on your actual tools. And um, this company here, I always recommend them, modelingtools.co.uk or littlecars.co.uk. Really, really good company. They sell some really good stuff. And they also, like, they sell the easy lot. I don't know anybody else that sells that. So, um, yeah, really good company. Recommend them thoroughly. Um, and I'm not paid to say it or given any freebies or anything. They're just, yeah, they're just a really, really good company. Um, so there we go. You will see me use other tools as we go. And as we go, I will say and tell you what they are or whatever. But um, 
for now, I just want to crack on with this kit. So let's get all this out of the way. This over here. And uh, let's get our instructions. And we'll start off going through the instructions. We can read some history there. And then we can look at our notes here. And here we need to make a decision. We need to decide, are we going to do it with the wings unfolded under carriage up? I mean, you can't do it wings folded under carriage up because it won't fly like that. No, no, maybe you didn't realise that, but it's, it's true. Um, so wings unfolded under carriage up, wings unfolded under carriage down, wings folded under carriage down. Right here, right now, I think I'm going to be doing this one, but I might change my mind. The problem for me with this one, it's easy to store and it makes it smaller, but the trouble is you cover up all that beautiful detail in the fuselage sides with all that sort of stretched skin is gorgeous and then all that lovely cockpit detail but then you are exposing all the lovely wing end detail so pays your money takes your choice so we've got to decide that now but this is what I think I'm going for and you can see that we've got these images here and they follow through the instructions here so if you see this at the top of the page that's applicable to all three types if you get to here where you've got undercarriage down and wings unfolded that means you're building it with the undercarriage down and the wings unfolded. You see here, undercarriage down and undercarriage up, wings unfolded. So basically, that's what you want to be doing. Just look at it and uh, make sure you study it. Um, it's also telling you here, as I mentioned in my review, that you've got some panels that you can leave off. Um, you could perhaps leave them loose. I may well do some work with magnets and have them so they stay on there and then you can just pull them off. Um, if I do, then obviously I'll show you all of that. And then here you've got the option, you can put a motor in here and um, have a motor running the propeller. And it shows you there the routing for the cabling. So the, it's going to come out of the back through that hatch there. All right, so you could actually put the battery inside there, have that hatch removable and put your battery inside so you don't have to have the cables coming through a stand or anything. So um, yeah, something worth looking at. And then here we've got all our paint call outs. Now, something I said I'd do in my review is I would show you a cross-reference. So I need to get that done. And there you go, guys. There's a conversion I've done for you. Um, where you see a question mark, this is my estimation of that colour. Okay. Where you see no question mark, this is what Humbrol suggests is that conversion, that colour. Now, for example, you need to be a little bit mindful of the fact that they... The problem is people who do color conversion charts, if they say, you know, that um, this this matte dark slate gray, if they turn around and say, well, here you go, XF83 is a nice color for that, then someone will say, no, it's not because it's so many pigments out and everything. So when you actually look at color conversion charts, you need to bear in mind that the the people have to be careful because the people just come and run them down. So what I've done, it's like. I've got here 85 coal black is actually XF85, which is a rubber black. Um, coal black is a is basically a um, where is it? It's Tammy called it rubber black. It's just it's just not black. It's a very very dark grey. You should really try and avoid using black on your models at all costs anyway, because nothing is really really black when you when you you know what I mean. So. These, these areas where there's a question mark, this is my estimation of what that colour is. I mean, this US dark grey, um, XF69 is a very dark grey, you've also got German grey. And the other thing you have to look at is we don't know yet where this is going to be used. I mean, you may go and search and search and search for this US dark grey and then find it's actually a handle in the cockpit or something and that's it, you know. So it would be scratched and rubbed and touched anyway. So, you know, the actual colour itself, 130 white here, you see, they've got matte white and then they've got 130 white. 130 is a satin. So you could use XF2 and then put a satin varnish over it, which is what they're saying here. Satin extra dark sea grey plus matte varnish. So Humbrol don't make a colour to match that dark sea grey. Um, so they're saying use that and then put matte varnish over it, number 49. Well, I can say use XF24 I think is the same colour so um and and that's my sort of you know that's that's what I think but as I say if there's no question mark this is what Humber are suggesting from an old chart um if there's no number there there's nothing for it go away onto the internet find do, do your searches and everything paint conversion charts ask for you know a specific colour um 
but I must be honest, I've just looked for a, a colour match for this one. I couldn't find anything. So um, there you go. So I've, I've, I've zoomed that in so you can screen save that and, uh, and then you've got that to keep. Um, please don't hold me to it if I've got anything wrong. Um, I've just tried to help out here as best I can. OK, just one more thing, guys, on this 226 interior green. If you don't have the humble colour, don't worry. Um, this is a very accurate representation of interior green for US aircraft. OK, it says US Army and Navy aircraft, World War Two. And this is basically the colour H58. This is the one I'd suggest. If you don't mind smelly paints, these are lacquers. You can buy this set, this Mr. Colour set. And in there you get the zinc chromate yellow primer, which is like this yellow primer colour here. So for your wheelbase and everything. And then you've got this, um, this colour here, aircraft grey green. And that is the RAF green interior colour. Okay, that's the equivalency like your Tami XF71. So you wouldn't be using that on this one, although it may be that matte beige green colour. No, it's XF21, sorry. So yeah, you wouldn't be using that on this one. And then here is your zinc chromate type one, which is that colour there, which is basically your interior green. So um, th these aren't thoroughly mixed, but you can see they're very, very similar. And I would also recommend if you're doing the um, any of the, uh, the the three, the two American or the one French version from the um, from the kit, I would recommend getting this. Uh, this is Mr. Color C365. They call it Gloss C Blue, Gloss C Blue. That's what they're actually saying there. Um, now X3 is this color here, and I think that's a little bit too blue. This is this color is it's not stirred well, but it's much darker than what they're suggesting, okay? So um, if I were you, I would get yourself maybe a couple of bottles of this one. I've got a couple here, uh, this gloss V blue, because it's um, it's actually the perfect color match for, uh, for, the, for the aircraft. Okay, so there we go. That's all the uh, paint talked about and everything. So, you, you know, you pay your money, it takes your choice. You can end up spending more on paint than you do on the, on the model in some cases. But um, basic rule of thumbs is Tamiya paint doesn't perform particularly well on a brush, but it's great for airbrushing when you mix it with like something like Goon's Mr. Color Thinners. But this one, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, really, really good stuff. It's smelly, but it's fantastic thinner. Um, and if that's what I'm going to live in your country, probably the next best is this one. This is really good. I can possibly thin thinner from AK. Um, so, yeah, there's your airbrushing paints. But on the brush, um, you, you'll see me use a lot in this. I'll, I'll use um, Revell. You can thin Revell down to basically wash and then just keep putting you know, sort of two or three coats on. And it leaves a lovely finish. And it's, it's all the paints. It's one of the most hard wearing. It's very, very tough paint, but it takes a little bit longer to dry. Um, so yeah, as I say, you, 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 if you're going to build this with me, then you'll you'll basically see what I do. And if, if, as I say in all my builds, if you do what I do, you should end up with a model like mine. So um, I'm not going to try and tell you how to do anything. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So um, just wondering there if you can basically change your mind afterwards and then the, add, add that in there before you fit the engine. Um, OK, so going forward, here we are. We're going to start with the cockpit. Now, something I did notice in the review that I forgot to mention, um, and again, credit goes out to Airfix here. Really fantastic planning, guys. Thank you very much. If you look on this page, or these two pages here, six and seven, have you got, are they all in shot? Yes, they are. You will see every single part is on the D-sprue. So you get the D-sprue out, you put it here, you cut parts off, you build it, and you work on it. It's fantastic. How many times have we built Ravel kits where you're forever digging through the box when you've got, you know, when you've got these massive sprues like this? The last thing you want to do is having to keep dig through the box and try and find out oh, you need that part there, and then you get another sprue out for this part here, and then four sprues down in the box, you need another part there. You know, all of that is on here. This is the D sprue. It's all on there. So what I can do is just take that sprue off and um, and, and go for it. So um, without further ado, let's make a start. So here we go. We've got the kit here. Uh, I've got my fuselage halves, my wings, 
Um, I can have these, this is the wing folded option you see, there's the inner wings going on there and then the wing folded options here, propeller, undercarriage legs and that, so um, we've got a little canopy as well there, look. So um, I'll get this off the sprue now and we'll make a start. Hang on, isn't this the wrong kit? Sorry, this is the one we want isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right so I'll get this off the sprue and make a start. And as I said, I've got my cheap cutters here that I use for sprue. So I'm going to basically cut this off here. And then, I don't know about where you live, but here in the UK, well, in Gloucester, um, we, we, we recycle all our plastic. And this is um, polystyrene, as we all know. And if I put this in my recycling bin, they won't take it. So this actually goes to landfill, unfortunately, here which is a bit of a shame so uh, yeah there's there's a whole sort of I don't know there's more plastic in there than there is in there and I'm throwing that away there we go so that's all those parts there now I'm looking at the plastic and it doesn't feel oily at all actually it is I'm gonna have to wash this right I'll see you in a sec right so finally we can start looking at this build now as I said, Airfix have done an amazing job here by getting all of these parts all on the same sprue. So you can basically put the box back in the cupboard and just work with this for the first two pages of the build. And then you'll see when we get to um, the next step, it's all E. Everything here is E. So it's just fantastic planning. It's um, brilliant. Thank you, guys. Whoever, um, whoever at Airfix planned that, deserves a medal in my opinion because there's nothing worse than having to dart around and go through all the different sprues. So it, can you tell I'm happy about that? Looking at this, we've got all these little um, members going in here which are floor stiffeners and then more bits going in here and everything that's going in here it says 226 and 226 is that interior green colour. So what I need to do is basically build all this up and then paint it. But I'm looking here we've got this I don't know, fire extinguisher, whatever it is, which is part here, 39, part D39. And that is actually signal red. Now, if I paint everything green and then try and paint that signal red with a brush, um, it's going to be quite difficult to do because you've got to get over the back. You've got to get in around the end of the dome and then in, in on the end of that one to make it look any good. Now, I'm not even sure if it's going to be visible when it's built. But I tend to not worry about that too much. I tend to model for the enjoyment of doing it and the enjoyment of knowing that I've got it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first paint that. I guess the first thing I'm going to do is get that off the sprue, clean it up. I'm going to paint it yellow first and then I'll paint it red. The reason I paint it yellow first, yellow is a fantastic undercoat for red. To get that to come up with that bright luster red colour, we'd have to put a lot of paint on and possibly lose some sharpness. And then once that's gone off, I'm going to mask it and then we can put that in there. Um, we can leave it till after we've built all of this and then we'll put it in. So we've got all this time to build all this and then we'll put it in masked and then paint and then we'll take the masking off and we'll get the lovely green stripes on there or the green belts, I should I say. And then once it's all had a wash, it'll look lovely. So that's the first thing to do is get that off the sprue, clean it up and paint it. So here we go. There's the first part removed possibly the first one ever by a customer, not done, not done at Airfix. So I've got my uh, knife here with a nice new blade on it, just going to clean off the sprue nib. Bear in mind guys, I'm aiming this initially at newer modelers. Um, I will lay off of all the simple stuff very, very shortly. And then I'm going to get my floory skiddy stick, which is the real soft one designed for doing round things. And then I can just sand away and remove that mould seam. Easy as pie, just like that. And there we go. That's what I like about this Airfix plastic. It's fairly soft. Well, it's very soft actually, which makes removing um, sanding detail away, you know, sanding uh, sprue lines, uh, mould lines away, should I say. And, can't talk. Um, sanding mold loads away it makes it really easy because because it's soft. I'm being careful not to remove any detail. 
if you don't have any of these um, floury sanding sticks, I would suggest you go and have a look and get some, or there's the UMP ones as well. They're all pretty much of a much like muchness, I believe. The only reason I use floury is because that's what I started with. When I started buying sanding sticks, I think Flory was the only person actually making dedicated sanding sticks and they've just got better and better over the years. But um, you tend to stick to what you like, don't you really? So, and I've got hundreds of them. If you look back, I've done a whole video on the sanding sticks and you'll see that I've got quite a collection of them. So there we go, that's that done. That's ready for a coat of yellow paint. So I'll get it stuck onto a stick and then I'll come back to you when it's all painted red. Yellow. Red. And satin varnish. Right, so while that fire extinguisher is uh, drying, or whatever it is, I'm assuming it's a fire extinguisher because it's red, uh, we're going to look at putting all these little stiffeners into the floor here, which are all going underneath the seat. Now, I'm not sure how many of them are going to be visible or how much we're going to see of them in there, but on the back of them, we've got some ejector pin marks you can see here. So I'll just show you there. And I really want to get rid of them just because, because I can. <laughs> um, and I've also got some ejector pin marks in here, which I'm going to get rid of as well. Now, normally for ejector pin marks, I would put some super glue in there and then finish off with Mr. Surfacer. The problem with using super glue on this plastic is it's very soft and super glue is very hard. You can mix it with talcum powder, you can mix it with dental powder, um, but I don't have any. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use Mr. Surfacer 500, which is the, the thickest of all. You can see that's very, very thick in there. And all I'm going to do is just dab it on. And the reason I'm using this is because it's, it's softer than the plastic. So when I sand it, I will be able to sand it away. Now the problem is with using something that's harder than the plastic is you will end up sanding away around around your um, your super glue as well. So you end up with kind of a, a mound of super glue. And it's very difficult to get it flat without actually affecting the, uh, the surrounding plastic. So that's all I'm going to do is just paint that in like that. Just to hide those those marks probably don't even need to do this I could even just sand them until they disappear but um, that one there is quite deep so but I don't want to thin them out too much or they might look odd um, and as I say I'm not even sure that any of this is going to be seen but you know I've got this equipment to do it I've got the materials I may as well so I'm just going to fill these up and then let them dry all right then guys it's um it's still Friday evening, it's what is it, uh, just gone 8 o'clock Friday evening, 21st of June, the day this kit was released. And I've put Mr. Surfacer in basically all the ejector pin marks that I think will be visible. Um, I'm not sure if it matters with these at all, but I thought I may as well do it, you know, because it's there. Um, and also this bulkhead here, this goes in front of the rudder pedal, so I'm not sure if these will be visible or not. But um, if you're not building this kit right away, you can watch me build it and then you can learn from, from my mistakes or whether you need to bother or not because I mean these here I don't think they're going to be visible at all because this 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 bulkhead goes in the fuselage and the actual um, the actual canopies here so if it was an F3 with a little side window you would see in there but you're not going to see in there with this one so uh, so probably not worth bothering with but you know they're there so I'll do them um, and I'm going to have that probably have that belly pan open at the bottom so you can look up inside anyway so uh, yeah we'll see where we go with that um, but yeah I'm, I'm still waiting for the Mr. Services to dry I've tried rubbing some down and it's it's really too soft and the trouble is if you if you do if you don't wait and let it go fully hard what will happen is and I'll probably find this now tomorrow when I come back to this the Mr. Surfacer would have shrunk in the ejector pin hole so rubbing it down is actually a waste of time until it's actually gone hard so um there we go one tip for you guys um, on this sprue, this is sprue D, they call it frame D, uh, part 38 is this spindly little pipe, piece of pipe work here and it actually goes in the sprue there. If I were you I would cut it off and then remove these legs because the sprue is basically pretty much flat 
but with that on there you've got this leg sticking up it's actually that way so when you come to start sanding these marks and, and it's all set up like this and if you put any pressure on it you're going to snap that so my advice is cut that off the sprue now and you can see over here I've taken the parts for the control column off the sprue and this pipework here and I've gone down the pipework with a scriber to try and make it a bit more pronounced so that when it's washed it sort of really jumps out a bit I don't know how much we're going to see of that probably none of it at all really but um but it's there that's the thing it's, if it's there it's worth detailing so um and the fun is all in the modeling not necessarily the finished result so there we go um and i've just noticed on those seat belts there's no detail there's no stitching detail on them hmm i may replace them i don't know we'll see so um anyway there we go um I'll just leave this now to the morning. I won't, there's no point putting a video up now with this little tiny bit on. So um, I'll see you tomorrow, Saturday, and I'll get all this rubbed out and we'll start building up the floor. And then I'll probably do this page and, uh, and then we'll we end the video there and then we'll start the second part with all this stuff here. All right, so um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, good morning. Back again. Uh, Saturday morning now, uh, 22nd of June. Um, so I've done all the ejector pin marks, they're all sanded out now. Um, just a little tip for the newer members amongst us. Um, you get these little skinny sticks and you can cut the ends of them to shape so you can sort of, you know, get into corners without affecting your riveting detail. And then when you get to bits like um, here, you can cut the end to that kind of shape and then, you know, you can get in that gap then. So it's, you know, never throw your old sticks away. It's always handy to keep the old ones and you can cut the ends about. Um, these stiffeners that go in the floor here, they've got the holes in them um, and they've all got a bit of flash in the hole. So basically I've got a 1.2 millimeter drill and I'm just literally running through each one just like that. You can do it with, a, um, with the tip of your knife. If you've got a, a number 10A blade like this, you can just go in there with your knife and just clean it out like that. But um, I've got a drill, so I'm gonna use it. Um, if you don't have a little set of drills, always worth having for modelling because uh, they do come in very handy. And obviously, if you are an experienced modeler, you've already got them. So there we go. And if you notice, I'm using it in a in a hand pin vice, um, so that if you know I don't make any mistakes and it doesn't melt the plastic and stuff like that. I have got a little Tamiya drill, but um. No point in getting that just for this. It's just as easy just to run through these with the drill just to improve the appearance. And at the moment, as I said in my last little segment, I'm not sure how much any of this is going to get seen. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've done all these ejector pin marks. I may not need to have done any of them, but uh, we will see. I've done it. You might not have to. That's the beauty of being the doing the first online build of a brand new kit is I don't know what's uh, what to look out for. So um, and it's because of people doing the first builds like this that people learn what to look out for. So that's pretty good. Right, so they're all cleaned out now. Um, we're ready to start building. Um, one more bit of advice for the newer guys: get yourself a little old curry tray to put your bits in. Saves them getting damaged, saves them getting all covered in dust and everything when you're sanding. So, um, there's that joystick part there that can stay in. So, <clears throat> let's get on with this building. Let's start gluing our first bits together. So, we've got the floor here, and it's saying we've got to put all these pieces in a certain order. So, these are all on the sprue, like so. So, we've got... On that outside there, the first one is number 10. So where's my snips? There they are. If I get number 10 first, so that's number 10 there. And just, uh, where's my new stick? There it is. Just clean those ends off. Remove the sprue nibs. And then just quick swipe Make sure there's no Mr. Surfacer on there. So number 10 is going on. Okay, it's got two 
holes closer together there than they are at the back so it goes on that way round that just pops in there like that and then the next one is a seven and the next one after that is an eleven so we can pop that one off the sprue quick wipe over each end swipe across there see there's a mr. service runner that might affect the fit looks like I forgot to sand this one right so number 11 is going that way and it's the third one over So, and then you've got two sevens, and you've got an eight. Number eight. That one's going to go that way. They've thoughtfully marked the, the floor out, so you can't really get this wrong. Even if you took them all off the sprue, I don't think you could make a mistake, to be honest. Um, and then we've got a seven, and the outside is the nine. And then we're just left with sevens. So, yeah, I could have just cut all these off the sprue. Um, and the floor has been engineered in such a way that I don't think you could go wrong. So... worth remembering if you want to get all the parts off and uh, do your rejector pin marks before you um before you fit them It'd be a bit easier than doing it on the sprue because the the sprue gets in the way <coughs> so let's go in closer holes at the front i just want to see can you actually fit this backwards no it won't go in that slot there so as i say you can just cut them all off and because of the way it's been engineered you can't really go wrong which is uh, which is nice okay so that's those in and then the rest of them are seven so i'll get those cut off cleaned up and glued in and then i'll come yeah. back and i'm just going to put a, a drop of extra thin on the end of each one or each end of each one should i say Yeah, this brush in this extra thin is absolutely tiny, it doesn't hold any glue. <laughs> this is ridiculous, I'm not putting anything on there. Let me um, use this other one. Last thing you want is parts of your cockpit falling out when you when you start sanding the fuselage and stuff. Just make sure they're all down. There we go. Now I'm not sure how much of this is going to be seen, but when you look at it straight on, you don't need to worry about those ejector pin marks. And certainly if you put the ejector pin marks on these two middle ones facing each other, you don't need to worry about them. So do we need to worry about them or not? I don't know. <clears throat> we'll see as we go through the build. So that's part one done. Now it's part two, we've got to glue this together. So we've got the, the lower section there and then this upper section here where the control column is going to go on and this required a little bit of sanding to get a good fit 
um, and even now you can see it wants to just spring apart so what I'm going to do is put some cement in here let it run around and that will soften things up and probably make it fit a lot better so just push that down on the back ease that over what I want to see is some glue oozing out because then I don't need to put any filler in it I will just be able to sand it need a little clamp or something on there so I'm going to get my little pinching tweezers and put them on there no, they don't want to hold in fact I may not need anything now I think what is coming from behind and get some more glue in there Give that a squeeze okay so now that can dry and that can be sanded sanded smooth and I'm also going to put some Mr. Surfacer around here if it actually doesn't need it I don't think just brush some cement into there that's your demarcation between the gator and the actual frame so that's pretty cool right so moving on to step three we're going to add this piece of pipe or this rack of pipes in here so that's going to go in like so again if you put a decent amount of glue on there you should be able to get some oozing and then just blend it in with a brush so that's that one in okay, that's that done and then we've got to add the control column and these two frames here that go either side so they're going out here so what I don't want to do is I don't want to put this control column in yet until I've dealt with that joint so these two parts here D12 and D13 so here's D12 Clean those sprue nibs off of there. And as we say, I've already done the ejector pins on the back of here. Just give them a, another little quick clean up. Check they're all good. Sand the faces. So this was number 12 wasn't it yet yeah. and 12 is going in there like so that just clips in it's almost like um the fit is very wingnut wings-esque it's almost like if you painted it first it wouldn't go together so um something worth bearing in mind what I'll do is I'll just glue in from behind on these tabs that'll hold that in place and do the same with this one so great that we're working for one sprue guys it really is it just makes such a difference rather than sitting here endlessly digging through the box looking for sprues Just going to clean that hole that has a bit of flash in there just 
go in there and clean that one out. The others are fine. There's a little bit in there. Just trim that out. There we go. <clears throat> and then glue this one in. Of course, this is curved. It's got. It's supposed to be curved. It's the upper surface of the wing. <laughs> The wing centre box, if you like. It's probably a fuel tank in there, I'm guessing. And there we go. So that's that part done. I'm going to wait for that to dry and sand that off. So let's start looking at this uh, bulkhead now. So. We've got this rear bulkhead from the cockpit. So get this off the sprue. And then come in closer. Now somebody commented um, in one of my review videos that they knew somebody who was building this on Facebook and they were having trouble getting the fuselage halves together. Now as I just said, this has got a very Wingnut Wings-esque like fit to it. There's no clearances. There's no, people say it's high tolerance. It's not high tolerance. It's no, there's no clearance allowed for paint. So just be very, very careful as you are with the Wingnut Wings kit. You know, you can't afford to be having paint around the edge of here and then expect the fuselage to go together. It won't happen like that. So um, yeah, and also around there, there's a bit of a, a bit of a mold seam on the edge. So I'm just taking that away with this uh, with this medium sander. And that should help things. And just in here, we've got some very small mold seams in there. That's better. We could just go in here with a knife and just just give them a little scrape just to get rid of them. Right, so <clears throat> I actually dropped that then and <laughs> stopped the camera. So while the camera was stopped, I took the opportunity to get all these parts off and get them cleaned up. And this deals with section four, basically. So um, what we need to do now is just highlight this a little bit. And Look, this is something I always do when you've got plastic molded um, parts that represent tubes or piping they're always just kind of you know you've got your flat panel there and then the tube is that shape whereas in reality it would be that shape so what I do I just get a knife blade and a new one with a very sharp tip and just go in from the back and just literally just scrape away at it just to undercut it a bit now be careful not to remove the rivet detail here and what this does when you actually come to paint it and put a wash on you'll get a shadow rather than it just looking like a molded on lump you'll get a shadow in the plastic but that bit in the middle there can't be seen because it's got a cover going over it which I'm about to fit so that's basically you get the idea and you can go as far as you want I mean, you can go almost right the way through if you want to from both sides and you can achieve quite a remarkable difference in just a couple of minutes with a few swipes of a knife like that and I'm just going to give that a clean up and I'm going to run some Tamiya extra thin around take away the fluffiness There we go. And I don't know if you can see that, but already you can see. I'll try and get this in the camera. You can see it's got a kind of shadow to it already, rather than this just a plastic lump. So that's something I always do. And I mean, you can go to town with it. I've got some um, Lancaster bits I've done. Um, 
Where is one here? Here we go. Now these parts here, this this is a, a bulkhead which I've wood grained, and that was just literally that was just a moulded on sort of D shaped lump, and I've gone round with the knife down either side to make them look like tubes. So that's the sort of thing we're talking about. So let's uh, get on with this build. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this part in here, which is uh, D17, and it looks like it goes that way. That edge isn't straight. Let's just sand that lightly. And thin it out a touch. So it looks like it goes that way. Will it go the other way? It will fit that way. But it certainly looks like in the instructions that the you see one one face is more angled than the other, and it certainly looks like the more angled face is to the right. So that's the way I'm gonna go with that one. So I'm just gonna polish this top where the sprue nib was. Just pop that in there, grab some extra thin. In there. As I say, this this my brush for extra thin holds nothing, so it looks like I'm piling the glue on. I'm not. So that's that one done, uh, and then we've got this um, the pilot's armor going on, and that kind of hooks in behind that piece there. Now this piece here, if you look at your references, is actually a part of the headrest. I'll show you a picture now. There you go. You can see there's the um, the headrest and up piece of plastic coming up is actually the bottom of it there so um remember that you need to fill that joint and then we'll paint all that khaki okay back right um i've cleaned all these bits up as i said i put this this um armor plating on here and realized that it's actually sitting a little too high i felt so i've just sanded a little bit of material from this groove here which allows it to sit lower down the other thing I've done is gone over the back of it and sanded it a bit thinner, just a little bit. Um, it was like a little bit too thick, too chunky, I don't know. Um, but we, we have to remember this is 24 scale and that would have been a, a fairly thick piece of steel. So, you know, we need, we need to um, leave it quite thick. And the other thing is, I noticed when it was in like this, if you actually looked along the side down here, you could see the hole in the back. So I've just cut some plastic card, filled that in. And I didn't even wait for the glue to dry before I sanded it because you can see so little of it, it doesn't really matter. But I just wanted to be able to, you know, not look in there and see that great big hole, if you like. So, um, so that's ready to go on now. So I can fit that one. I'm not quite sure where to glue it. I guess if I just put a touch in there and a touch in there. maybe a drop in there and a drop in there yeah that'll hold it and then what i need to do once it's dry <clears throat> put something in there to get rid of that gap um i want a seam there but i don't want a gap i want it to look it's you know stitched so i'm not sure if it's actually touching or not i think it is actually i don't think there is a gap there so um, that's fine. And what I may do is just cut a little slither of plastic card and put underneath it, because in real life it's actually um, there's actually like a little flange on there. So <clears throat> in fact, I'll do that before I fit those belts. I think. Okay, let's get this together then. So I fitted this little um, this little lever, this pull handle here, so that's in there. And this little uh, knob, obviously some sort of trim or whatever, um, that goes in there. It's a very loose fit in the hole, so I just glued it in from behind and then centred it up in that hole. I think later on a, a tank goes on the back of there or something. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that tank goes on there, that one. 
goes onto there. So obviously that's a cock. It's not a um, it's a it's a wheel for actually opening a, a valve or something. So this part here, what I've done up here, I've gone over this with some liquid cement, just painted on like so, and then just keep brushing it, and it just gives it a bit of texture, so it doesn't look like a piece of plastic when you paint it with the, you know, you're trying to do it leather, or you can do it um, with your khaki. Um, I also need to put something in that gap there, I think. So all that's done now, um, the armor plate is fitted. This part here, this is the basically the, the rail that the uh, seat belt goes over and this is going to slot into there. Now I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use these kit seat belts. So I'm going to glue this in place but I'm not going to glue that at all. So basically that's how that's going to sit in there. And that side doesn't want to go in, that square is a little on the large side. So I'll just take my There we go. That can pop in there like that now. So I'm assuming that's how that goes. Although when you look at it in instructions, it looks like it sits down flatter against there, but it actually won't sit down flatter against there. a bit strange maybe I should just give it a little um come out the fit of this kit is actually uh, very good as I say it's very wing nut wings like Let's just give that a little bend and that's the beauty of this hair fixed plastic it's so soft you can uh, almost bend it around like copper there we go that sits a lot better now so that can go in there And as I said, I'm not going to glue that part of the harness. I'm only going to glue the frame and then if I need to, I can cut that out. Okay, so that's that glued in there. Lovely. There's lovely, as they say in Wales. All right, um, so that completes that step. I'm not putting the fire extinguisher in because obviously I've got that over here, as you remember, it's painted. Um, I'll leave that to as long as I can to before I mask it. And what I might do is mask it and put it on and then paint it all together so the straps are painted in one or just mask it, paint it separately and then pop it in afterwards with a bit of a super glue or something. So that's in like that now. Um, now, moving along here, we're going to put the, I haven't done this yet, I need to put the control column in the floor here. I've dealt with that seam now. So that's going to sit in there like that. So I'm going from underneath and put some glue in. Like so. And get some quick set in and just put that on there to hold that in place. And then that one goes down in there. So we'll put a bit of quick setting in there as well. That'll just hold them. Oops, I glued my thumb to the to the model. And probably pulled all of the glue out with my thumb. And luckily I was on the back face, not the front face. Schoolboy error there, nice be silly boy. So that's that in there, and then this panel here. Note with this panel, you've got a little square cut out there that goes that goes there, as you can see. So I can pop that in like that, and I can just see I've got a little bit of a sprue nib left on there still. So I'll clean that up. A new stick. There we go. 
So that's going to go in there, like so. So that's all good. Now I'm looking now, should I get some paint in there before I put this on? Because getting paint down in there is going to be a nightmare. I think I'll leave that off for now. But that just shows you that basically fitting that means doing the the ejector pins in those two parts. That was 12 and 13. You don't need to because that covers them up. So we don't need to worry about the ejector pin marks in there. These here, when you're looking down into the cockpit, I don't think you're going to need to do them either. Um, but that's entirely up to you. Um, and these on the back of here, I'm not so sure yet. The back of the headrest I think needs to do it. The back of the armour plate needs to do it. And fill that hole on the back of the headrest as well is my advice. So I think I'll leave that off until I get some green paint in there. Then I'll put that on and then we'll uh, carry on. Um, so for now what I'm going to do is attach this to the... Attach the floor to the bulkhead. And what it's telling you to do is use the the fuselage halves for correct alignment. So let me just grab my fuselage halves out the box. And I'm not sure what it says which one to use. Okay, we're using the port side. So basically that's going to fit in there like that that's a very nice fit and that's going to fit in there like like that but i don't see any location here so i don't think we need to worry about using the fuselage halves yet at this moment So I'm just going to put this on here. I've sanded a little bit off the top of these pipes here because they were just fouling and stopping it going together properly. So that's something else worth looking at on your model. And then I'm going to get some extra thin. I'll just go in from underneath. And plonk some in that joint. There we go, put some on those gussets as well. It's going to be a big old cockpit this. It's going to be fantastic for chipping and, and stuff. And then I'll just go in here. I want to get a nice strong joint. Um, because we may have to come along afterwards and tweak it to fit. And there we go, that's not going anywhere. <clears throat> so let's just get these uh, fuselage halves again. And uh, just try it in this one. See, that bulkhead slots in there beautifully. And then there's a there's one little peg there that it appears that this actually goes into. So there we go. So that's that in place, I believe. That's how it's going to go. So there we are, guys. So I'm happy with that. So you don't need to line up the fuselage at all because it fits that well. It just goes together like a dream. And I'm going to run in there with some surfacer afterwards and just uh, get one of those little gaps where the holes are. And I'm also going to go over these little points here. So um, something to be playing with. And then we've got to add that little tiny flimsy pipe that I took off. And this needs some clean up. So I'll give it a quick clean up. using the uh, skinny stick just to make sure we haven't got any seam lines on there 
Okay, that pipe fits in underneath that little triangular bracket there and then goes into that hole there and then there's two holes down here and it practically fits, clips in. I've decided not to glue it in yet because I want to deal with that seam down behind in the corner. So I'm not going to glue that in yet. So that's that part there will be waiting and that part there will be waiting. Um, I haven't put any glue in there have I, on those pipes. Just get them glued in. There you go. And basically that is that for that part. So I've got the fire extinguisher, the rudder pedal guides and that pipe left off. But the rest of it is all done as per the instructions. Now that, I've knocked that cock from the back. I just want to straighten that out. There we go. Right, so that's that done. Now it's saying to, we need to look at this forward bulkhead with the rudder pedals. So once again, same sprue, sprue D. And we've got D32 and D31. So the one in my right hand is 31 and that's 32. So we get those great big ejector tabs off. Sand down these joints. That's how I get my medium sander for this. Go all the way around. Clean up, mindful of the fact, if you remember I said, apparently people have had issues getting the fuselage together. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know. But that's what somebody commented that, uh, apparently somebody on Facebook had said they couldn't get the fuselage house together. Well, they must have had a very early release of this kit because... Um, you know, I'm, I'm on, this is the second day of release. I'm not even off the first page of the instructions yet, so. There we go. Let's get rid of those bits of plastic. That's that all cleaned up and ready to go. I'm not sure if those holes should be drilled through or not. We'll have a look at that after. So this was 31. So it's a new one. Let's clean up these sprue nibs. And then a quick swipe over just to get rid of any uh, mold seam lines. So this is 31, so this is going to go on, do, 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 do. yes, yeah, on this side. As you can hear, I just clicked in. So as I say, it's very, um, very Wingnut Wings-esque with the fit. I'm just going to put some glue in there and glue in there. That should allow me to push it in more snugly. No, it looks like those tabs are too long. So I'm just going to remove some material from those tabs. down on there it's very strange it doesn't want to go together it doesn't want to sit sit in up against the bulkhead it just wants to sit there sort of a little bit proud so I'm just going to remove a bit from the side of these tabs but being careful not to remove any uh, rivet detail There we go, that's better. 
so the tabs are just slightly too wide so as I was saying before you know if you painted any of this first it won't go together <laughs> it will not go together with paint on it I can assure you so that's going to sit like that and then we'll do the same on this one clean up the ends clean up the mold seams Shorten the tabs a touch and narrow the tabs. Taking care not to destroy the rivet detail. Yeah, that's better. That's like a standard normal model part fit like you would expect from any other plastic kit. Go. so that's lovely they've gone together very nice okay so that's the supports for the rudder pedals and then we'll get the rudder pedals off which are D33 and they are very nice looking rudder pedals to be fair like the rest of this kit everything looks uh, pretty damn lovely As I say, I'm building this pretty much out of the box. Um, my plan is, at the moment, I don't know, um, but right here, right now, I'm thinking I'll build another one with all the extras. And I'm hoping, the, just to take the monotony out of it, I'm hoping that Airfix are going to um, release the F3 version of this. And at least then you won't be building the same kit all over again. So there we go. It's nice to see as well, guys. I see I've been reading the comments from the reviews. Um, it's nice to see that I'm making you spend your money. <laughs> um, and there was what is there now? Four or five people have actually ordered this kit on the back of my review. So that's uh, job done. Get you all buying them, and then hopefully you'll um, build it with me. Uh, I'm sure you can catch up. And basically, I've, it seems like I've pretty much wasted the last couple of hours for me, a few hours for me, a few minutes for you, doing all these ejection pin marks because it looks like actually they didn't need doing at all. But um, ah well. So this is going to go as another seam there. One thing I hate on models is mold seams. I can't stand it. I think it, you, you can have the. I've seen it before at shows where people have, or, or at model shows, where people have, you know, gone to all the trouble to put in all the extras and the photo etch and they've done the wood grain effect and made leather cushions that look so real and they've left, I mean, right, ejector pin marks in the fuselage walls or something like that. You know, it's just crazy. So that's going to go in like that into there. That's a nice positive fit. So they're in like that. Dab of extra thin. In each side. Just give them another little nudge now they've got the glue on them. And that is that. And that is going to sit on top of there like so. In fact it's worth dry fitting this now guys because those two vertical legs fit into slots in the floor so there we go so that's like your cockpit's gonna be so I'm not sure I've, I don't think you need to worry about these ejector pin marks up here but I would certainly do those two those two at the bottom well, there's, there's actually there's four one two three four across the bottom because when you get in there with the wash and stuff, you may well see them once the instrument panel's in. I, I don't know, but it's not worth taking the risk. So, yeah, don't worry about these two up here. Um, probably don't worry about any about these on here. Certainly don't need to do them on there. 
and you probably would get away without doing them on those two parts 12 and 13 as well um, but for me it's always worth doing them because there's nothing worse like I say you get your cockpit built up it's all nicely painted green is whether you give it a wash boom you know you've got wash going around these ejector pin marks everywhere awful so what I said was we do this page and then we call it a day for this video and then in the next part we'll move on and we'll uh, and we'll do this page here um, what I'll probably do off camera is go on and glue this in okay so we'll glue this this front in and then I can start working on the seams and stuff so um what do you think guys part one I know it's been a bit slow but I wanted to cover the tools and stuff for the uh, for the newer, mod newer modelers out there and I covered the glues and that as well um, and also we talked about all these ejector pin marks and stuff um, I know everyone's going to say yeah, it shouldn't be ejector pin marks on there as a 2019 kit yeah we all know that um, sometimes they're unavoidable um, you know Tamiya are, are, are renowned for ejector pin marks everywhere and then when it turns out you build the model you actually cover them all up if you remember Phil Flory's review of the uh, Tamiya Mosquito, he was very disappointed in the ejection pin marks. When he built it, he realised they all get covered up. So, you know, um, and I think it's pretty much the same here. Certainly those two parts there. Um, sorry, this one, this is 31 and 32. I don't think you need to worry about. 12 and 13, don't worry about the ejection pin marks on them. Up to you whether you do them in these little supports here. Definitely do those bottom four across that front bulkhead. And that's it um, so don't waste your time with the rest oh and definitely do them in the uh, armor plating as well and thin that armor plating out a bit with some sanded sticks it makes it look a little bit sweeter so um anyway there we go thanks for watching if you've liked what you've seen please hit that like button and subscribe um, part two will probably be up tomorrow and we'll get this ready get some more building done here um, I'm probably going to break away from the instructions slightly, like not fit the seat, um, not fit that centre panel and sort of, you know, not do as the instructions say until everything's painted. Obviously, we've got the um, the photo etch parts from the air scale set to go on here. So there's that panel there. So going to be fitting that on there. Nice that we get those levers in plastic. That's pretty cool. So um, as I say, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, come back for part two. Go get yourself one of these kits. Get it from Antics, £107.99, free UK delivery, and build it with me. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.